concept of a seismic shadow zone as a global effect of an earthquake is an oversimplification that ignores a broad array of refracted, reflected, and diffracted seismic waves that propagate through the Earth. For now, we'll just focus on direct compressional P and shearing S waves. These are the body waves that take the most direct routes within the Earth and do create shadow zones, which are useful for teaching Earth's structure. An earthquake depicted here at the top of the globe for convenience sends compressional P waves in all directions, refracting along boundaries with depth, causing curving paths. At the core mantle boundary, they are refracted or bent inward and slow down in the liquid. It's this refraction that causes a shadow zone between the angular distances of 104 to 140 degrees from the earthquake. S waves travel along the same path as the P waves, but at a slower velocity because they travel in a shearing motion perpendicular to the direction of travel. It's because of this shearing that they're stopped entirely by the liquid core. This creates an even broader shadow zone everywhere beyond 104 degrees. It was this lack of S wave arrivals and recognition of the slowing of the P wave velocity that caught the attention of seismologists in 1910. By understanding how energy is refracted by different materials and pressures, it enabled them to deduce a liquid outer core. By 1913, the P wave shadow zone between 104 and 140 degrees was refined to define the core mantle boundary. Remember these show just two of the many types of seismic waves that migrate away from an earthquake.